Welcome to the second episode of the Stuck In Podcast. Um, thank you to the viewers at home and uh, anybody listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. I'm very happy to bring to you the first podcast that my guest has ever been on. The first guest I've ever had on this podcast, Hara Stewart. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a great honor to be the first guest and hopefully we can have a, you know interesting conversation. I believe we will. I believe we will. Sadly, Vikram isn't able to join us today because he just proposed to his fiance. Congratulations, Vic. Congratulations. Well done to you. <laughs> so, Harris, footballer, national serviceman, model, influencer, a good mate. Just shy of 30 appearances in the SPL in two seasons of playing so far. Third. We'll get on to that in a second. Numerous international caps from Singapore from under 18 up until under 23. Senior call up coming soon. You've got eight yellow cards in the SPL, two goals and an assist. How does it feel to have made your first appearance of the year just two days ago? How does it feel to finally get your, your year in the SPL kicked off? First of all, thank you for the very kind and generous introduction. I've never actually had someone do that, so, you know, that's You're a first. You're very welcome, mate. You're very welcome. Um, but yeah, you know, it's been a, a kind of a long and unique year for myself, you know, especially with enlisting at the start of the year. Um, yeah, it felt really good. Obviously, I I had already played in the SEA Games, so, you know, that kind of, it was kind of a, a second debut of the season, I guess. But, you know, it's good to be back and it's been a long journey since I enlisted, mm-hmm. but, you know, the hair's mm-hmm. grown out a little bit and uh, hopefully the looking points good, can grow good. a little bit more too with the team. Yeah. So, is it a weird feeling though? Because you've played the SPL this year, third season now, but you sort of started the year with the SEA Games, the biggest event, I'd say, to your to your career so far. Would you say is that as well? Yeah, I think it's kind of like I got flipped, The you know, the it got flipped on its head a little bit in the sense that usually you're, like, playing in the SPL to, like, build up to the big tournament, and this time it was totally different. I had to just, like, kind of get thrown into the deep end. You swam, though. You swam. You didn't yeah, see you know, I thought, I thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought, I thought it was a... It was, it was interesting. It was, it was fun, definitely really fun, you know, to go travel again. And it was difficult, you know, the games were high intensity, but, you know, um, it was definitely enjoyable. And, yeah, it's it's nice to, to finally be back. And I think that, in a way, it kind of helped my debut in a sense. I kind of, like, went from, a, you know, playing international, which is a lot higher intensity. And now, I'm not saying that SPL is not a good intensity, but it's a different type of intensity, I guess, when you're playing club football. Yeah, yeah, you sort of started on the high and then now you can um, yeah. now calm I'm yourself just, down. Yeah, and adjust, just... yeah, a little bit more. But you didn't just kill on the pitch in Vietnam. You were, you know, you scored a couple of goals. I won't <laughs> say which end. But um, you also got a lot of notoriety for your off-the-pitch affairs. I'll bring this up. The Smart Local, a Singaporean uh, me- media outlet, listed you as one of the athletes to watch in a SEA Games edition of Thirst Traps. L, you know, the famous fashion, whatever they, they do, Vietnam edition, listed you as one of the handsome faces at the 31st Sea Games. And a Vietnamese outlet called chowbui.net with 15,000 followers said you won hearts because of your beauty and your talents. How does that feel to have all these descriptions of you for not even what you're doing on the pitch? Does it ever feel strange yeah i know i mean i feel like it's really strange you know because at the end of the day what i want to be known for is to be a good footballer you know what i mean that's how i want people to look at me a good footballer a good person you know you don't want to be looked um, at as an object exactly i don't want to be looked at as like uh a handsome guy yeah that plays, yeah, football. plays football exactly i want to be looked at as, as a football guy who who you know so happens to be exactly. handsome exactly <laughs> so that's 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 the but you know it's it's all it's all good you know I, I didn't know about this you know my friends were just like you know you i was telling you about it uh you know other friends were sending me like the posts and stuff it was just very funny to look at and just you know it's like it's i guess uh you know good publicity in the end of the day you it's know not, there's no not, harm yeah. there's no harm no harm done it's but it also just kind of makes it a bit more like a little bit of extra pressure you know because you have to perform you know but you know i'm okay with that and, you know, I think it's it's always nice to be recognized for your good looks. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like you said, you want to be recognized as a footballer first yeah. and maybe a, a handsome person second. 
I mean, it's kind of weird when you say handsome person, but I just like, <laughs> yeah, I want to be recognized as a footballer first and okay, then like okay, whatever yes, else yeah. happens after that, yeah. it can be. But the thing is, this this transition from footballer to maybe influencer and all these other things, it, didn't, it, it sort of happened overnight for you. You know, you were playing football and then this sort of all just spurted up out of nowhere. Like, how did you deal with that? Like, even now, do you ever feel at times like, oh, I wish I didn't have this other stuff alongside it. Like, I wish I could just focus on the football things. I mean, I think I'm just taking it as it goes. And like back when it all started, it was quite, you know, quite crazy in a sense. Like I remember I was like, had this a really chill, you know, low key guy had like 200 followers. And then suddenly I signed for a while, Young Lions. And then, you know, obviously being around Mark and, you know, he always like, loves to post his TikToks. And then suddenly they go like crazy viral overnight, mm. like millions and millions of views. And then suddenly getting like thousands, tens of thousands of followers. And just like every time refreshing my phone, it's like, poof, poof, poof. you know, more and more. Um, so, but I think I can't even imagine what it, what it would be like to be like actually famous, you know, worldwide famous. I mean, I, I felt like this was so crazy and it wasn't even that big of a scale. You and may not think it's that big of a scale, but I was having that debate today actually with, with our social media officer, you know, Joel. I was saying that you were a global sensation because it reached me in Hong Kong. I know it reached, but you and I have discussed it before, it reached people in UK, US, like there were people all mm. around the world who were sort of interacting with your content, even if it wasn't directly from your account. So that must have been kind of surreal and even probably still is when you look back on it. Yeah, I mean, it's. It, I think it was definitely a good experience, you know, like to go through it. But at the end of the day, I don't think it changed me. I think I'm still the same person and like... You just have a few more yeah, followers now. exactly, exactly. And I feel like I don't really like, I'm not really that active on social media anyway. I don't really use it that much. I just like like to focus on the real world and like you know, I don't really like to use it that much I mean it's nice but at the end of the day I think I'm still the same person and it was definitely a good experience to like kind of help me you know see like how to handle myself when like a lot of people are watching and like be more you know mature and stuff like that and you yeah, sort of media I, I think, trained yourself exactly right? exactly and I went through a lot of like good experiences you know like working with like a lot of different brands and like stuff like that you know I, I think want, I want to get into yeah. that in a, in a second because for those that at home that don't know Harris does have quite a strong media i'd say following even though he's like he said he's not that active on it which sometimes i i really fault him because I'm, I'm wondering to myself if you have that many followers a lot of opportunities could come but he has had a lot of opportunities come so far he's an under armor athlete he's worked with big brands such as jbl boss nivea and i'm assuming there's, there's more to come as well in the pipeline is there anything that from all this has come that's one thing that's been your favorite experience so far. Maybe something to do with your 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 personally, or that you've been I mean, able to done for your family. Or yeah, honestly, I think the biggest thing has to be the Under Armour because I think as a kid, you know, we both know it. Like the boot deal. The, 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 the boot, boot deal, deal is like that's like to signify like the you know what I mean. That's when you're a kid, you always like look at the you know your idols, you know, and you always, they all have the boot deals, and I think just to like kind of get boots for free in a sense like not have to buy them and just like get them handed over to you or like for example like you can ask for stuff and just like get it kind of like whenever you want that's just like it was kind of like just like a, a full circle moment you know what i mean like I'm, I'm not saying i made it but like at the same time it's like a milestone in you the long journey you didn't make it but you made it in another sense yeah, yeah i mean like it's just to, like to your 12 year old self exactly like you made I, it i mean like obviously you dream about these things and like you think about these things in the future like oh like what what, what boots i would get and like how how it would go and like you watch videos on professionals and there's like stacks and stacks of boots and stuff like that but to finally have it happen to you it's kind of just like a like a wow moment i think that has to be the the like yeah the biggest moment so far in terms of that side of the you know the spectrum I, I, yeah i would say that for any aspiring footballer especially that sort of kit deal is, or boot deal or whatever it is, is is the, the deal, you know? People don't really... Nowadays, it's becoming more common for footballers to get into other brands and stuff like that. But for the most part, it was always just your a Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, Puma, whatever it is, that was your, your main sponsor yeah. and that was it. Yeah, exactly. Especially because like when I was a kid, I was crazy into boots. Mm. You know, I was like the, the person like searching up like what boots were coming out, like what colors what, were coming what, out. If somebody and asked you what, exactly, what boots exactly. the player was wearing, you'd exactly, know it off the top exa of Exactly, head. exactly. And like I would know the... Like, every single boot that any player was wearing you know what i mean and it's like um did you have a favorite boot growing up uh i think i was more like i would literally wear everything because when i when you i when just, when, when i know when i was growing up my dad was always like he would always like take us to the outlet malls he never buy us the like expensive boots or like the so-called nice boots but he's still like you know he'd, he'd take us to like the deals 
you know what I mean? You got the good boots yeah. at a good price. I mean, like, yeah, 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 yeah I would say that. You know, I always had to be leather, black. You know, if he was feeling a little bit courageous, he, we could get some white, Ooh. you know, white boots. You know what I mean? So Spice like, it up. So like, or like, you know, we just like kind of sneak off with my mom when my dad was at work and then get boots. That was always like a good way to, to get the boots you wanted. But like, I think, you know, like growing up, I was I was crazy into boots. And then so like, but now, you know, now that I, I don't really pay attention too much. And so it's like kind of weird to think about it. Like when you, you know, when you when don't younger, have a boot yeah. deal. I mean, like, I guess you, you like you're crazy into boots. And now that you get free boots, you don't really like, you just like kind of like whatever is comfortable. You know what I mean? I guess it's it's also part of you know maturing and growing up. You know we're yeah. no longer into the same things that we yeah. that we were when we were younger. <laughs> but um, speaking speaking of growing up, I want to talk to you a little bit about how you've transitioned in the last two three years. You know when I first met you, you were a, a viral sensation. You still are to an extent. But at that time, I mean I've told you this before. Maybe the audience doesn't know that um, I was actually a fan of Harris before I, I became a friend. So. <laughs> Living in Hong Kong, I was obviously on TikTok, seeing all these guys go viral in Singapore, and it was it was surreal, you know, all these Singaporean footballers that are around my age, you know, it somewhere in my in my head I was like, one day hopefully I'll, I'll be friends with these guys, teammates with them, and it'd be so good, right? <laughs> and we come two two and a half years later, it's 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 weird as as to say, but yeah, we are friends and we are teammates and we are all these things. But I want to talk to you about how that affected your life in the moment, because that was unavoidable for you every single day, right? Because for me, the, the one that sticks out is that Gaylan game mm. that you were playing at, at uh, our Tampanese hub. Yeah, yeah. You went viral over drinking water and splashing water on yourself. Yeah, I, I mean... That How did that feel? Yeah, that, that, was, that, that, was a, that was like such a funny game because like, first of all, like, okay, I was just like really, really warm. And I was like, okay, let me just like... And, and that's what I usually do. Like just, you know, put some water on my, on my face. And then... And I think... I think as well, like coach was scolding me <laughs> in that moment. <laughs> I think because I just like Some, something that, I just like made a miss pass, and from that miss pass, they got a free kick, and then they scored from that free kick. Oh, so you know, it's, it's, it's one of those. And it was like only in my second or third game, I think. Oh, okay. And like, you know, I was still like getting used to everything, and like still like kind of trying to play catch up in a sense. And then um, I just remember, okay, yeah, just playing the game. Then when I get out, there's like there's one entrance to leave, and at the entrance, it's like. That was, I think, that was the, the moment. The moment that, like, I realized, like, wow, like how big this thing kind of went. Because before that, it was kind of like, yeah, like people would kind of like maybe you see it on your phone. Yeah, exactly on my life. phone. And in real life, this time was like literally like I think like at least fifty to a hundred people <sighs> just like cramming this one small exit. And for, like, for those that don't know, like, the exit at our Tampanese hub is notorious for fans. But I don't think I've ever seen fifty people in total there, let alone for one yeah, person. Yeah, yeah, it was like fifty or something, and guys, like people screaming, you know, like people screaming, like ah, hi, and hi, like hi. little kids and and like asking, like just flashing the photos. Were just like I couldn't see. It was like oh, I was like, that's like, your, that's I'm it was, a celebrity. It was, it was moment. just like it was like flashing and flashing, and I was like, well, like wow, you know, I was like just very appreciative on all the support and stuff, and you know, it kind of gave me like kind of like a taste for like to work harder i feel because like i'm like that's how i want it to be but only for my football you know what okay, i mean yeah. i want i want to I do that i want to like because you know subconsciously at the, in that moment that yeah. you're not there because you're exactly. an amazing footballer just yet you know yeah, exactly i want to like maybe it's part of the earlier but not yet you know you know notoriety that uh that like support but just like purely from a football that's how i always think about it like i just want to be the best footballer i can be and then like you know be successful in that area that's the the one important area that i feel like i would put above everything else in, i mean in that's terms of being the, i mean successful. so far from our discussion that's a, a reoccurring theme you know that you want to be the best footballer and that's your priority and i mean mm. i can i can see that from literally the moment i met you the the conversations we had were almost all about football you know yeah, i still like, remember meeting you and your your ginger haircut that was that was that was it was a it was a dark time guys <laughs> pre pre ns you know i was messing around uh, my brother box dyed my hair in a, in, a, uh, in our in our bathroom and yeah. it, it turned out ginger instead of blonde uh, at the beach right i remember meeting you at the yeah. beach yeah and so. then we uh, we had my my first experience of his his i i want to say celebrity status was when we actually went to um a water park here in singapore and yeah, uh, we yeah. got stopped outside the changing room because uh, some young girls wanted to take a photo with him. And yeah. I just stood there in, in awe. I was like, wow, <laughs> this is what it's like. And it, even oh, to him, probably two fans, you know, compared to the 50 or 100 he had previously was, was nothing. But to me, I looked at it. I was like, wow, this is, this is crazy. How, mm. how, how do you move on from that, though? How do you refocus on football? You know, because you and I spend a lot of time together training, you know, 
even even before I signed for a while, you know, edge of the box and stuff like that. But you never ever seem to let that media side ever affect your training and your focus mm. on what you do and your craft because I mean, you are up and coming. You are showing a lot of potential to go and be a national team level player overseas, all this sort of stuff. How do you not let everything affect you? I mean, I think at the end of the day, I, I still haven't even like made it at all, to be honest. I'm still in such a small, I'm still a small fish in a small pond, you know what I mean? And there's still so much more work to do and so much more, so many things that I feel like I can achieve and I haven't achieved yet. And you know, it's, it's just, I need to keep working hard. And I feel like, um, you know, I, I haven't changed since I was like, before all, all the you know what i mean the the popularity the, the or, so yeah exactly fame, yeah. um i mean I, I think the way i grew up i was always like very like you know relaxed chill i didn't really care about popularity or like you know i always had a tight-knit group of friends like and then you know i wouldn't really care about what other people thought of me because i felt like the most important thing is what your friends what your family thinks of you yeah, you know what i mean close to you, exactly yeah. that's the most important i don't really care what anyone else thinks of me they can have whatever opinion they want but at the end of the day that doesn't matter to me because you know, I don't really care about what they think. And so I just think that I, I still have such a long way to go. And, um, you know, I know kind of like what I need to do to get there. And I'm still learning along the way. And I have a lot of people that are helping me. And I'm just like, you know, hopefully I can I can just reach my full potential because I know that I'm not there yet. And that's all I want to be. I just want to be the best person I can be. I can't, you know, say that I, I'll be this or that. I just want to be the best me. You know, I, I, I mean, I... I... I'm in that sort of similar environment. You know, we push each other. And I yeah, think that's yeah. what you mentioned with close-knit friends. Like, not just that, but your family as well. I know you and your family are very, very close. Yeah. And they sort of surround you in an environment where you can be the best. You know, your parents are very encouraging. You also have a brother who's in the same industry and he's a little bit ahead of you because of age and all these different things. So he can push you. And yeah. it probably motivates you, right? Yeah, I mean... In you, that- you look at him reaching heights that you want to reach immediately as well, you know? Exactly. I think I think having Rahan as an older brother is, is really good because obviously sometimes it's a bit annoying, you know, let's, let's just put that out there first <laughs> the, of all. The two most argumentative brothers I've ever seen. No, I, mean, I have an older brother as well. I mean, I think it, but it's like it's, it's just a typical old like brothers thing, you know? You know no, you, 100%, you, 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 yeah. you can't like, it's kind of like a... Uh, you argue because you, you, you love each other at the end of the day. You just oh, want to see yeah. the best happen. And to you're each so other. competitive as exactly, well. Exactly, exactly. And um, I think having him kind of one step or like a couple steps ahead of me, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's really good for me because then I can see, you know, what he does well, what the little mistakes that he makes, and I can adjust what I need to do. And, and, and you know, just to, to see him always kind of be that like, one step ahead. Like when I was joining YL, he was like an established player. Yeah, you, like were, when, you were trialing you know and know he I mean? was already like proper. Exactly. In. So it's kind of just like, Gives me that extra bit of motivation. Obviously, that competitive side. You know, I always want to. I mean, I, I want him to succeed, but I want to succeed with him as well. You know, oh, yeah, we want to. Yeah. We, we're not trying to pull each other down just to get above. We're trying to just like keep pushing and just keep r- raising our levels. And I think that you the, know the levels I, are being raised. I say, exactly. you, ladies and gentlemen, you will find out soon. But the exactly. levels are being you know, raised. I'm, I'm very, I'm very proud of him, and uh, yeah. I'm very grateful to have an older brother like him. Because I mean, y- like you said, you have an older brother, yeah. and I'm not trying to like. I'm just saying, how many opportunities you have to have an older brother in the exact same like kind industry, of industry field, field and, and kind of same yeah. interests and like same goals you know I'd, what I mean I'd say you guys are quite similar in a sense as well that you aren't the most active on social media you guys are quite reserved you keep to yourself you know you, like yeah. you mentioned family tight-knit friends all these sort of things but then the moment you get onto the pitch you get what you need to do done you know you yeah. you are without a doubt some of the fittest strongest most potential you know in the, yeah. in the league and, and I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think another thing about the kind of the popularity side is that people think that maybe like I, I'm like, uh, you know, I think they assume that I'm like not as hardworking. You know what I mean? I think people sometimes assume that just but because you don't post it everywhere. Exactly. I mean, and 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 I think that I'm just trying to like, I think my game is kind of the opposite of what some people think of me. It's like more just like hard work. You know, I'm willing to do. I I want to do those things that no one else in, like, wants to you do. Get you get stuck know what I mean? in. Exactly. Get stuck in, and like. You know, just at the end of the day, I don't care about, I care about my individual performance, obviously, but I don't care about my individual results in a sense. I just care about helping the team in, in whatever way I can. And I, mean, I, 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 I can empathize with that as well, because I'd say you and I have almost similar play styles in the sense that maybe it's not the flashiest. Yeah, exactly. People might not be looking at us and be like, wow, this guy stands out like a mile above everyone else. But I think people that know football and, and know the scene understand how important players that maybe aren't the flashiest yeah. are to a team. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think, yeah, very similar in terms of 
you know, I think maybe the play style is not the most similar, but I think in terms of the impact that we have on the team is kind of yeah similar. You know, I mean, I, I, mean, I spend a little bit more time on the ground crawling yeah, around. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! But where do you think that comes from? That sort of mentality where you just focus yeah. on the, the the winning. Do you think that comes from? Like, I mean, your, I'm not focused only on the your, winning, but, but I mean, maybe like, not. In, I'm just focused on, on 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 doing the hard work. I think getting stuck in exactly, which is exactly what I, I'm focused on. You know, I mean, I mean, I always give hundred percent. I think that no matter what the circumstances, whether you know we're winning, losing, whatever it is, and I think that definitely comes from my dad and my and my mom, of course, mom and dad. Mm. But in terms of the football side, the sporting side, my, it was how my dad introduced me and you know he's always like you know it's always about hard work kind of british football yeah, values yeah, you know brexit, what I mean? brexit so uh, it's like i mean he always like told us like you know made us fit you he always made sure that you know that's the basics you know what i mean not, not like the basics in 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 how to be a good team player which is work hard you know like do the basics right simple I feel, things. I, see, I feel like you guys don't take anything for granted you know the opportunities that you guys have been afforded playing in the SPL, different things, national team college and stuff like that, you don't ever rest on your laurels and just say, okay, that's enough for me. You guys are always pushing yourselves and pushing each other, even me, because as much as you look at Raihan as an inspiration, you know, a couple steps ahead, I look at you and Raihan, so I almost have two separate indicators, you know? I mean, I've, I've told you guys this thank before. You, you. It, it is very motivating and it, it pushes me. Even before I signed with, with Young Lions, I, I discussed with Rory this a lot. I only wanted to train with you guys when we did edge of the box sessions because a lot of times you guys would have SPL games, right? And so you wouldn't be there on Sundays. And I always told him, look, I feel like I train my best and I always have a, a clearer goal in mind and to push myself when I see you guys because you guys were ahead of me. You guys had something that I wanted, you know? And I, I still look at you guys that way. And that's that's really what motivates me because I think you have the same mindset as me is that we're never satisfied with what we have, you know? Yeah. In, in an industry like football, especially in Singapore, it's very hard to, to push yourself to reach the next level because... A lot of people around us are just happy with what they have. You know? I mean, I think that if you look at football in general and you see at every single level, most of the players, especially at the top level, I would say obviously they're technically brilliant. You know, they're very, very good technically. And that's why they're the top level. But you also have players that that they maybe aren't there. the yeah. best technically, but they would do they do their job, you know, because at, at the end of the day, it's a team game. Mm. If, if if it's like the same as in basketball or in football and any team game, you know, sometimes it's not about the best players, but the best team. So you have to fulfill your role, you know. And I think that in football, if you look at it nowadays, it's not the most technical players who are the most successful. Look at the I mean, style obviously, of football nowadays. obviously, you have your Messi's, your Ronaldo's, those guys who are just on a different level. But at the end of the day, you can't have eleven of them. You exactly. Know? So you need people to like work hard at all times. And I think that luxury players, you know, even exactly. Like we, we if, talk about if, that. if you look at teams like you know, like the Brexit teams, as we'll say, but the Burnleys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Look at the, the, there's no star players, you know. I mean, there maybe can be one. Somebody can. Like, everyone exactly. can produce a little bit of magic, but their 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 foundations are built in in hard work and you know exactly, discipline exactly. and all this sort of stuff. That and I think, I think if you if you look at Singapore, I think that that's what we slowly need to build a bit more, in my opinion. I think it's a it's a cultural thing, right? Yeah. I think that uh, if you look at Vietnam, for example, I say that in terms of technical skills, yeah, they're very good. But I wouldn't say they're miles apart from Singapore. But I think that that mentality, that hard work, that like physicality, that fitness level, you can see it. They're like running like it's their they last never stop. game. They never stop. Yeah. They're just running like it's their last game and they never stop. And man, it's just like 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 yeah. like, like playing feel, football with yeah. like with dogs. Honestly, in, in yeah. a good sense, you know what like, I mean? Like, they're just like dogged and like rugged and just like they they are the definition of stuck in like all of them are running endlessly get tackles whatever it is like you, they don't give you a second to breathe and i feel like when you have 11 of that and you're playing against it it's almost impossible exactly, to, because when to you have feel 11, comfortable in when, a, any point yeah when you have 11 of that you don't need the best dribbler or the best uh, technical players because if you all pass and move and run and run you create space for each other no, I 100% and then, agree with and that. Then, and then if you're willing to run more than the other team, there's a high chance that you're probably going to win the game because at the end of the day, you'll be, able to, you'll be there to make those you know, defensive uh, tackles or you'll be there to, to run that extra mile. You know, When the other team's knackered, you'll just be there. But you know, I think that's, that's, that's one thing that I try and like, pride myself on is just like, working hard and being able to just like, you know, I, th I think the extra. I think extra you pride bit. yourself on it, but as well, it's it's known in the league and you know within our team, especially you know when whenever we have these stats after the games, we're it's clear today that you're always at the top of the distance. You and Raihan 
are, are always on top because you pride yourself on that. And I, I mean, I think this sort of ties into, you know, how you guys work and, and what your goals are. What, what are your thoughts on the way people perceive you guys as, as players and as a, like a team? Like, because people from the outside might, might look at Young Lions as just, like, you and I know that we put in a lot of work and there, there's a lot of thought and effort that goes into the way we play and, and what we try to do. But then maybe people on the outside don't necessarily yeah. look at it that way. I think people in the, fo- in the industry understand the struggles of, of Young Lions. But I, I, this, for example, I was talking to, like, my NS superiors about mm-hmm. Young Lions who, who they know football, but they don't necessarily know, like, the ins and outs. So they're like, oh, um, like, why, why, why Young Lions? Why aren't they doing so well? And then I was like, and they did, and I was like, oh, they we're all NSFs, you know, because it's, it's difficult. Eighty five percent, exactly. I say like majority of the team is 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 serving NS, and and obviously that makes it a different challenge compared to other teams because, you know, in other teams you probably have ninety percent of the guys are are full time. You know, yeah. I mean, like not students, not 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 in NS. So so they're like that that that's their life. Football, everything revolves yeah. around football. They can plan Whereas, their days according to exactly. just the football. And I think it makes so much difference now coming into NS. Yeah. Uh, it shows like just like having to, to, to just like be serving the whole day. Yeah. Uh, and I then, mean, yeah, it's basically a nine to five before your exactly. you have a job before your job. You know, you yeah. just enlisted. I've just already. Yeah, so exactly. we, we were on opposite side, ends ends of the of the equation. But I think it's still clear to both of us that there are a lot of challenges that come with it. You know, it's not as easy as we train and then we get a, a game. You know, yeah. pe- we had a midweek game this week. People are turning up right from work. You know, you don't prepare for a game maybe as as you usually would. Exactly. You're not having you're however many hours of rest. You know, your your specific meals and stuff like Literally, that. Literally before the game, I went to Cheers and got myself a microwavable pasta, but like bolognese pasta. But this guy eats microwavable <laughs> pasta before he. Although he is very very lean, has an extremely good physique and runs like crazy. He ha- is fueled by microwavable pasta from Seven Eleven because there's no other choice. There's no other choice. I mean, I don't have time to go to to a restaurant and get a, myself a pasta dish. So and then they have to make do with what I do. I just get a Pocari sweat. Makes it even more impressive, and, honestly. And uh, a microwavable pasta. I try and get the one that's le- that's that's, that's, that's <laughs> the least oily. Yeah. So 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 you know. I mean, mac and cheese is my usual go-to, but that's yeah. not too healthy. So. Pre-match, I was like, you know, I saw this bolognese and I was like, you know, I'll give it a go. And it was not bad. I mean, I, li- I literally did get, like, stitches, <laughs> like, halfway through the first half and they so, were unbearable. Uh, <laughs> but, but you know... still finished the game with 11 kilometers, most yeah, of the team. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I I felt good, you know. Honestly, I felt like I could run more. Yeah. I'm not really like, I, I felt I think, like I could run a lot more. I think that's more. one of those things that, you know, is so underrated about players. Like you mentioned, you know, players that, that do the hard work and do the stuff that's maybe not the, the most eye-catching, but... Like you said, you, that's that's what you do. That's that, almost your bread and butter. Like you can count on you to con- consistently get eleven, maybe even more. You know, every game. Yeah, I mean, also another thing I want to talk about while is that yeah, all all of us are in NS, so that has a, a big impact. Mm. And also another thing is that we're all under twenty three. Yeah. You know what I mean? The development. Like, that that's the point, I mean, right? If you if if you want to talk about the wild teams of old that were successful getting third place, first of all, they had foreigners. Mm which make a big difference. Yeah. I mean, because I feel like in terms of locals, I, th- I feel like YL is very competitive compared to every other team except maybe Lion City Sailors. Yeah, I think on paper, you know, most yeah. of our guys are able but to I compete and play for Especially now that it's four foreigners, it makes a big difference. You know what I mean? Because I feel like the, the four foreigners make a big difference the to quality, every team. Exactly. The quality is just on a and, different level you know, so, of some of these teams. So I think that for a while, it's always going to be an uphill battle. You know, there's going to be a lot of obstacles, but I think that if we invited anyone to come in, they would see that, you know, we, we, we give our all, the coaching staff gives their all, and, you know, we're very focused and we're trying to develop, but also, you know... We want to win. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we, want, we want to win, but at, at the same time, you have to understand that the main objective of Wild is not to win now, but to produce players. National team national, players, you know, exactly. that's the whole point. But then another thing is that it's you can have the argument that, you know, maybe this having constant losing seasons yeah. as you can say no, I, does I, have I, an impact on mentality so that's why you know it's very important as much as we hate losing and obviously every every footballer hates losing you know we're all competitive but at a certain point you do become sort of accustomed to it in a bad in, in, as much as we hate to say it when you're consistently not getting the the best results it does weigh on your men, mental exactly, state a yeah. bit you know because we go into maybe games without the most confidence especially when we go on an international stage because majority of the players do do carry over yeah. so it, it's hard to refocus I feel like yeah. and 
and sort of spin your your mindset into a positive one. But I think yeah, so that that's 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 that's. A, that's a I, I think that there's there's a debate. You know, uh, people always bring up whether young lions should get this man. That you know, every year there's there's a debate. But yeah. I think f- for now, you know, it's. I one think of that those there's things. no alternative option because how many players? There's going to be at least twenty players maybe in NS every year, and yeah. who have potential to to make the, the next step yeah. exactly. So are you just gonna if if you get rid of young lions? And you just completely you cut play, it all yeah, off. You, have you will not have a you will not have a pipe. You'll have players up to 18, 19, and then you'll have like 23, 23, 24. 24. And by the time you're twenty three, twenty four, if you haven't been playing at a decent level for two years, it takes a toll. Yeah, it takes definitely. a toll. You see players that often fall through the cracks and don't make it into young lions. It's hard for them to recover because exactly. you're if you are playing at all, you're playing at the SFL, SFL one, SFL two, or maybe even some other form of football. You know, it's difficult to maintain a professional standard when you're not only juggling NS, but you're also not being able to train at the, the highest of levels that maybe we are able to at Young Lions. Exactly. One one thing I want to really touch on, because I think it's prevalent to both of us, it's sort of moving away from football, but still dabbles in it a little bit. I want to look at the, the cultural aspect of being mixed race. It's okay. something you and I share. Okay. I think it's a very interesting thing because not only are we mixed race, but we also both grew up outside of Singapore. Mm. You know, you were born here, yeah. I was born here, but we both moved away when we were quite young. Yeah. And what was it like for you to be half Asian and half European in Europe, but also be half Asian, half European in Asia? I mean, you know what I mean? I think, I think we've talked about this yeah. and it's kind of like... I just find it very I know, interesting. I know, I know, yeah. but it's like, uh, kind of like you don't really fit in wherever you go. The the only place you actually fit in is probably an international school because oh, everyone is yeah. everyone is half this or half that or everyone's not from that country you know, but in terms of you know, growing up in you know being living in in Finland in Europe, I remember um even I don't even think I looked that Asian but no, they yeah. but they would think I'm very Asian they would I would look very foreign you know what I mean, and and they would know it immediately they could they could clock on it and I mean, it wasn't a bad thing but it's just that. You know, it's you just feel like, ostracized a little exactly. bit. Exactly. And, and especially if you don't, especially if you don't uh, speak, the speak the language, which makes a big impact, you know. But I mean, that, that's where football really helped, obviously, you know, because it's kind of just like a, a language in itself. Everybody just comes collectively exactly. together. You don't just speak play. to anyone. You just, you, just, you just play football. But then I think coming back to Asia and being kind of that Angmo, yeah. you know what I mean, in, especially in Singapore, and then going to local school, you know, when I first came back, it was kind of a... Kind of like and I, I feel like it's not just the way you look. You know, obviously when people think Ang Mo, they think expat, they think foreigner, Caucasian, whatever. It's just the way you look. But there's the accent, there's the, the cultural yeah, yeah, yeah. nuances. Because yeah. maybe the way they're used to doing things and the way they go about life is so different to what yeah. you or me are used to exactly. overseas, you know? I mean, I think like the... the Because <laughs> you kind of like speak in a more Singaporean way when you're, when you're talking to them. Just just so that it's more normal for them, mm. you know what I mean? Because if, if you I want to blend in, right? Exactly. I mean, it's, it's just like a kind of like a, a, a slight thing you know what I mean that you subconscious just, you're not yeah, doing it subconscious, exactly but um, you know like you, you, I mean it's, it's okay I, I feel like it's, it's good to, to to learn about all the different cultures and I definitely did I think it teaches up. a lot of lessons right exactly yeah and it makes you definitely more open minded and like I think it also matures you a lot living in living in, di- in different countries because um, you get to experience the world exactly you, know? you get to experience a lot of different things and like a lot of different cultures which is which is kind of cool and and also different because sometimes when you talk to like people who haven't really experienced that their viewpoint on certain things is totally different you know what i mean it's totally there, different. there's one thing that always irks me is that you know in singapore people do exams at 12 years of age you know psles yeah. you know these yeah. these primary school leaving examinations sort of determine your future in secondary school yeah I, I thought that was crazy as well. it's, it's mental that at 12 years old you know when when you and i were overseas we we're just sort of carefree you know we go to school you, you, you do your sports after school you just have fun but in singapore at at this age you're already doing these examinations that determine not directly but they have a massive impact on almost your entire future you know exactly. what I mean I feel it's 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 kind of absurd in a sense but it's a very Singaporean thing you know that yeah. it's very results focused because country you know culturally like it people makes a want- big impact and you're 12 years old and I remember me at 12 I'm, uh, and I'm looking at like people who I see who are 12 years old and I'm like they're still kids they should be outside like Having playing fun, football playing, yeah. you know what I mean or like you shouldn't have stress. Whatever. You shouldn't have stress. And they're and like pressure. stressed out of their minds. Dude, trying to like tuition, how many times exams. a day, how many times a week, you exactly. know, like all these things that shouldn't matter so much at that age are already taking precedence. Exactly. I think that's a cultural thing, you know, when it comes to football as well in Singapore, you know, people let it take priority. Yeah. 
because education is first. You know, I mean, there's that expectation to. to in, be. in terms of education and, you know, as living in Finland, I remember I had friends who obviously went to local school and literally they have like two or three hours a day. And yeah. when I was leaving, which is about 14, yeah. they were like doing basic maths. Wow. They were doing basic maths. I guess it's a trade-off. And, then. And, it's no, a trade-off. and the thing is, I remember seeing that Finland is like in the top whatever 10 or 5 in terms of education. In the world. In the world. And the thing is, because and, and and the reason is because they they let kids be kids, yeah. And they just you know they they don't really force them to learn. They kind of kind of like induce an interest, yeah, it's into like learning. If, so if, people if, want yeah. to learn. You know what I mean? So they want to go to school. I feel like it's almost one of those things where we we push too hard. You know, in Singapore, you push too hard to the point where you force them to study since they were eight, nine years yeah, old like all the my, way, and my, people burn out, and they just they just don't want to have anything yeah, to do with like school. Like my little sister is. She was like seven when she started primary one. Yeah. Okay. And she has to wake up like, I- I'm waking up for NS at like six a.m. Yeah. And like she wakes up like at six fifteen. That's yeah. I'm like school. Like, <sighs> that's unreal. That's like I get it's a space thing as well because you know, know primary know. one and three, but it's still very very demanding on you. Yeah, when on like kids, on babies, mate. Like like people who are seven who are like. <laughs> so I mean, I think we were so privileged to have the opportunity to grow up in in a yeah. in an environment that wasn't similar to what so we demanding. see now exactly yeah. like we sort of had the flexibility and freedom to learn and to explore life in a in a different way you know that we had more freedom to have fun and to you know for me every day i got home from school half three four o'clock straight away you just go out and play with your yeah. mates football for two hours on the street yeah. you know like you just had fun you didn't have to worry yeah. about homework really you just it was it didn't it didn't come until later which obviously at some point everybody has to focus on your studies yeah but i think that and i think that in Singaporean culture, it's kind of like you have to pick and choose, like football or studies, yeah. or like extracurricular activities or studies. Whereas in other cultures, maybe you can do both. Yeah. I mean, because if you look at like a lot of other cultures, they they encourage like look at the American culture, for example, like student sports, athletes, student yeah. athletes. Exactly, it's such a big thing, and it's like it's a it's a well respected thing, and like everyone kind of like you can aspire to be that, and and it's a pathway, it's a genuine yeah. pathway. Whereas in Singapore, I feel like by the time you're 16, it's like oh, like why are you still playing football? Like focus on your old levels. Yeah, I mean, even you know though I mean? you have sports school, you know, you experience yeah. it. As much as it's a school for sport and for for studies, when you go there, you're expected to maintain and juggle both, which is fair. But yeah. the fact that there's only one school in the entire country that sort of allows you and encourages you to find a balance between both, it's it's quite. But I think that that that's kind of slowly changing in terms of the Unleash the Roar mm, with SFAs, yeah, yeah. with us with more schools kind of being footballing schools where they kind of cater mm. to that I think and i think it's, that's it's good. a it's a better balance because at the end of the day you want to give people the flexibility to pursue football as a potential career option but as well have them have education as a background you know you and i are both people that i think find value in education you know although we do play football and we play professionally you and i don't just look at that as the end all be all you know exactly. we also want to be educated you yeah. also want to have these things in the pipeline for at some point to move on yeah yeah I mean, definitely, yeah, definitely. I think it's a very important part of anyone's life education, not just in terms of like getting a degree or, but just constantly wanting to learn. I think I think that's one thing I pick up from you as well because you don't just you're not just active on the pitch. You know, I see you have interests that maybe people don't normally associate with footballers. Like you said, you know, maybe on social media you portray this image of being a footballer and people think that's all you do. But I know you read. I know you're big into your albums and music. Yeah. You sort of have. I don't want to say quirky interest but just things that people maybe wouldn't normally associate with footballer because that's not what they see and that's not what they're accustomed to because I mean, even our social media officer just quickly joel like before he met us he, he he said that his opinion of us was not very high because he thought all of us were just these pompous arrogant guys because maybe that's what he thinks footballers are or what he sees on social media yeah i mean i think it's just like again i mean i can't speak for everyone but i just think that i guess when i when i grew up like you no know, my parents never really like they obviously they wanted us to study and stuff but they kind of just wanted to get us to to learn and be interested in things and pursue those interests, you know. So be it, on the pitch or off the pitch, exactly. you know, just be yourself. So it's like just 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 learn and be a better version of you every single day. Whether you learn a new a new whether you want to learn a new language, be musical. I mean, you or, and your guitar, you know. I mean, I mean, I I played like piano. Oh my god. When I was a kid, yeah, when I, I, was did, a kid. I did, I did, I did, I did violin. I, did, I I did violin as well. Uh, Rahan also plays the violin, and I, honestly, now looking back, I kind of regret dropping those things. But 
you know like yeah it was it, was, it must have been a nice skill you know to have even now yeah. like you play i wish i could i, could, I, I, I could, wish i could play the guitar honestly i'm very envious I of mean, that because i it's, mean but I, that the thing is that's the problem when my parents would tell me oh you should learn music and stuff i was like oh no nah, i don't want to do it. I just want to play football yeah you know what I know, I mean? I know. and then now like when i wanted to learn guitar i was like doing it all by myself i was like oh man imagine I you just started this yeah, younger, exactly yeah. exactly so no, yeah, yeah, I mean, I think that's one of those things when you're young, you know, you f- you focus on one thing, you just kind of want to do that. And as you get older, you wish, oh, I wish I spent more time investing in I guess, other things. I guess it's always that, like, your parents n- n- know best, you know what I mean? Yeah, because they, they've lived life exactly. as well, you know? And, and now, like, when, when I talk to my little sister and I'm like, oh, you should do this, and she doesn't want to listen to me, I just, I just think back to when uh-huh. I was her age and I was like, I thought, you know, you always think you know everything and you know yourself, and but, you know, especially people who are older, you know, your elders, they've they've lived through it, you know, they've seen it all and... I think sometimes we don't give them enough credit at the, at the time. All right. This is a question that I find very important and it sort of touches on what we, we discussed earlier. How do you find your sense of belonging? Like, how would you classify yourself in terms of ethnicity? Because this is a discussion I have with almost everybody I meet that's mixed race or has lived in different places. Like, if somebody was to ask you, where are you from? Or where would you say you're from? How would you answer that? I, okay, I, I usually just say I'm Singaporean, first yeah. of all. No, That's I, the easy I, answer. Yeah, it's the easy answer, yeah. But usually I just end up saying, oh, my mom's from Singapore and my dad's from Wales. That's what I usually say. With, with you especially, and I mean, I guess me to an extent, where you are from, your ethnicity, isn't where you lived either. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you lived in Finland, you lived in Dubai, and those places probably still have, they, they made you who you are as well. Yeah. I mean, I think that it's just, I don't really feel like, I belong anywhere, but it's not a bad thing. It's just like, in terms of, I just like experience a lot of different cultures. I, I enjoy learning about new cultures and just like, you know, I say that it's just a, it's a very unique um, position to be in. It's a privilege, I would yeah. I would say, you know, that we've experienced stuff. Yeah. But I, I mean, I have a funny story and I think I mentioned this to you before about, you know, this sort of sense of belonging and, and, and the cultural clashes because when I was, I think what, 13, 12, I was in Ireland uh, for a summer camp, Sligo Rovers. <laughs> And um, I was having difficulty explaining to the, the, the fellow kids there that even though one of my cousins was also at the camp, she's fully fully Irish, you know, blonde hair, looks looks white, you know, she's European. Yeah. I was having difficulty explaining that she was my cousin, but I lived, I, I, but I was half Singaporean and I lived in China. So wait, no, no, you're from China. No, I'm not from yeah, China. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing. They, they always thought when I say I lived in Finland, they're like, oh, so you're from Finland. They don't understand that you can be from somewhere else and live in a yeah, different exactly, place. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's, it's almost yeah, like a foreign yeah. concept because if you think about it, when you spent your entire life, you know, in one place, it doesn't make sense. Wait, wait you're from here, but you lived here, but yeah, you're also yeah. from here. And in the end, one of those kids made fun of me and said I ate dog because I lived in China. <laughs> so I, I might have picked him up and chucked him on his head. Uh, it was it was an it was an angry smell, you know. I have a little bit of anger <laughs> pent up inside of me. But the, the camp counselor understood, you know. He sided with me. He said we don't stand for racism. And uh, it's, it's, it's I remember giant. I remember driving away from the camp that day, and uh, I sort of stared him down. And he was cr- he was crying, uh, holding on to his mom. So I, I felt a little bit bad. But I mean, I mean, I mean, I've no been place called, for racism. I, I've been called Jackie Chan. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, and then, uh, in Finland, it was, it was so funny, you know, people it's would surreal always... It's like, that, like, yeah. the, the casual racism that, that people experience is... Even, I feel like when, when we are in Europe, they, they they look like we said, you know, when you're there, you're Asian. When you're here, you're white. You know, you yeah. don't really fit in in either place. Yeah. And here, you get if you get called Ang Mo, like, it feels weird, right? Because I mean, it's just, it's, literally it's, five it's, years it's, ago, it's five years now, ago, yeah. you were the Asian. Yeah, it's normal It just completely flips on his head. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's normal. It's, it's fine. I mean, and to, to add it. even more onto that, I don't know if this is, is something that you find, because for me, I mean, I'm, I'm not a religious person, but for you, you know, being Muslim, yes. you know, I feel like that's almost like another layer. On ah, top of yeah, the, definitely. I mean, like explaining I, to people I, yeah. that you are mixed, but you are also Muslim, but yeah. you're also, you I mean, know, all these different things. Yeah, I remember going to a mosque once when I moved out to Singapore and someone's like, huh, you don't look very Muslim. Like, and I was like, oh, yeah. I, mean, I didn't know there was a look. To <laughs> yeah, I, I, exactly, Muslim. exactly. But, you know, it's just... It's it's cool. I mean, I just. I mean, religion is a personal thing, right? And uh, you know, I mean, I don't really like. Again, I don't let it affect me. I mean, mm-hmm. I know some people would, but and then they, it has no impact on me. You know, I feel like words rarely have an impact on me, and okay, doesn't okay, really tough matter. Guy, okay, tough I mean, guy. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Like, what, what, what is someone calling you Angmo or or whatever or or whatever they call you? It's not. It doesn't hurt. You know, what I mean. Yeah. So. I mean, t- literally, perfectly segues into one thing that I wanted to bring up because I think it's something you and I have both experienced specifically playing football in Singapore is that there have been ish- instances where people look at maybe our national team squads or our young line squad and say 
why are there these fake Singaporeans playing for Singapore? Why are there these, you know, Ang Mo's or whatever representing the country? Because they, you know, our names don't necessarily look Singaporean. Yeah, Maybe exactly. our faces don't look Singaporean yeah. to what they're accustomed to and what they picture a Singaporean to be, right? How does that make you feel sometimes? You know, as much as we say words don't affect us, I'm sure at at some level, you know, it it does irk you a little bit, I right? Didn't, honestly, I didn't even know that people were saying that. I mean, I, 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 I mean, it's I not a common know. thing. There are a small, small specific. I mean, again, that, it does, does it make a difference? Yeah. It does it? Okay. Doesn't it? Doesn't even make a difference? Yeah, that's a. a, a I mean, good at the end of the day, have, yeah. like, it, if in, it's not physically affecting you, like maybe it could mentally affect you, but at the same time, like. I don't really doesn't really I don't even know who these people are. Yeah, it doesn't really you make you a you know what you you're about. You know, I, mean, you I know, know I'm Singaporean. Yeah. I know that I know I have like grandmas. I and, <laughs> exactly. And, you're serving NS. Is exactly, he yeah. is he in the camp nine to five? No, he's not. Yeah, you are. Exactly, so you yeah. are you are a Singaporean son. You know, you're doing yeah. you're doing everything that a Singaporean would do, right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's 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 all I can do. You know. Yeah. I think that's a a perfect way to to almost end the podcast. You know, Harry Stewart is a Singaporean son. <laughs> he's a also a, a media media protege of I don't know what I mean <laughs> it's big time but, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a humble. footballer I'm a footballer he's a footballer he's many things but um I think that that'll be it for the uh, second episode of the stuck in podcast hopefully you guys enjoy this if you do have any feedback let us know on um, YouTube Spotify Apple Podcasts Instagram whatever it is um, thank you very much thank you for having me and it was very enjoyable first episode first podcast for myself yeah. hopefully more to come you know i think uh, you know, could, we could me, have a reoccurring guest yeah here. get me on a guest like get, get me on the on when when you get a big bag we can have the discussions you know and all that get more mics you could even become a you know an additional host you know we bring in other guests i don't mind i don't mind i, don't mind. I, I think you, we have a good balance going on here yeah i mean like yeah, whatever 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 floats your boat <laughs>